So hi and welcome to Tech Talk Travel. We're at the Hedna LA event for 2020. Um, I'm here with Jan Freitag, who's the keynote speaker and he's opening up for the event. Jan, thanks for joining us. Great yeah, to have you my here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me back. You were here last year and you, yes. you mentioned that uh, things were looking okay for, for 2019. Yes. We're now a year later. How do you feel about it now? Do you still feel the same way? Well, things were okay in 2019. It's just things are slowing quite considerably actually. So rev par for the year came up in 0.9% in the United States. And with global GDP and US GDP slowing down, we're just not sure that there's a lot of catalyst for a lot more growth. Mm. So I think cost control is really gonna be mm. the name of the game. Mm. You also mentioned last year, if I remember correctly, that the limited service area was perhaps the area that showed the most potential for growth. Uh, is that still the same? Do you still feel the same way for going into 2020? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So last year when I was on this stage, I said, look, seven out of 10 rooms are limited service hotels. This year, I'm going to say seven out of 10 rooms are limited service hotels in the pipeline, I should mm. say. Mm. And what that means then with all this new competition is that there's very, very small room rate growth, actually in the 0.5% range or so. So really nothing to write home about. Yeah. You also mentioned in your presentation the um, fact that it's taking longer to build new properties, new, new, new hotels. Why do you think that is? What are, what are the factors that are influencing that? Yeah, so in the US, we had 3% unemployment. So basically anybody who wants a job has a job. And we see that a lot of subcontracts and contracts are just at capacity. Yeah. While the American economy is growing and people are trying to build, hotels are sort of towards the end of, of the food chain. Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's very, very hard to get people to actually put hammer to nail and mm -hmm. get it done. Right. So we're still seeing 200,000 uh, rooms under construction. But what we're hearing from our friends at Hilton or at, at Marriott um, in their three, third quarter earnings calls, they were very clearly saying, look, it's taking us longer to get stuff open. Now with um, 2020, we've had a kickoff year already. We're only literally just at the end of the month. We've almost had a war. We've got a, a virus outbreak coming from, yes. from Asia. Should there be concern? You did mention, and I'll come to it in, in our next question, but you did mention the possibility over the next decade of a recession. Do you think that there could be a, a dramatic economic slowdown if things do get worse out of, for example, Asia? So the short answer is no. Okay. The longer answer is yes. By no, I say, um, because we trust our friends from Tourism Economics, from Oxford Economics, we're saying, look, as long as things just sort of sputter along, GDP growth will be positive, the American economy will expand, which means there will be more room sold. Mm. Uh, GDP and room demand are connected mm. at the hip. Mm. But as you said, there's just a lot of uncertainty right now mm. about the, 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 the Asian flu virus going around and what, what that does, not just to China, but to travel globally. Right, right. You know? So it's too early to tell, can things go more wrong than right? Yeah, we're not pessimists by nature, we just trust the data, and the data right now says slow instead. Now, you also mentioned in your presentation five predictions for 2020. I'm going to run through them okay. and I'd like you if you could just to quickly comment on each of them <laughs> sure. for the benefit of those that weren't in your presentation. Yeah. First one was climate change. Talk to us a little bit about that. The defining factor of the next decade in my opinion. You know, we have to be more resilient. We have to design our operations and our real estate around resiliency because climate change and weather phenomena are not the exception. I think they're going to be more than one. Yeah. Also, was brand is dead and long live loyalty. Now, in your, in your slides, you presented all of the varying brands that fall, yeah. all fall under the major chains. It is confusing. I, I totally agree with you. How do you see the impact of groups like Sondo and Oyo impacting that and influencing that? And, and is loyalty really the key for those brands long term? Is that something that the next generation of traveler is really interested in? I think coming out of the gate when companies like Airbnb or other startups in the vacation rental or, or, or home sharing space started, people were saying, oh wow, you know, loyalty is dead, like these millennials, you know, they don't want any of that. I don't quite believe that. I think when they get to our age, not quite our age, but a little bit older and, and, and travel professionally, that they're going to say, look, I like my points, I like my standards, I like what it is. You know, so I think Saunders has an interesting business model, certainly. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think there are still Alfred and Lurik and, and um, there, there are others, uh, Nido, like them, that are going into this niche of saying, look, we provide a hotel branded experience, you know, in the home rental mm. space. So that's certainly also something that's that we're going to see going forward. But I think it's all going to converge, as you can see. Marriott is now in the home rental space as well. Yes, yes, yeah. 
So I think it's all just going to be one. Yeah. And the question is, what's the umbrella over all of it? And to me, that's loyalty. Right. Cleaning fees. You spoke yes. about the, the resort fees. <laughs> so, Tell us about that one. So resort fees are just really, people love to hate them. You know, and nobody really likes them. And even the owners are saying, look, but I need to boost my bottom line somehow because STR keeps saying the top line isn't growing very much. True. So what do we do? And then this resort fee thing came up. I think the easier way is to just follow what's happening on the home rental vacation, uh, rental destination side, which is cleaning fees. Mm. You know, people expect them already. Mm. Our customers have been trained to expect them on that side. Why not also on the hotel side? So I honestly think that's something that a lot of hotels are gonna look at in the next 10 years. Okay, Amazon's world. You said that Amazon over the next 10 years will be focusing more on travel. Yeah, they have. And mm -hmm. so I have this. Uh, I brought this website up from the Wayback Machine, which is an internet site, um, travel.amazon.com. It exists. It existed. I just think it will again. When we look at Google, there are a lot of search intentions, but with Amazon, you know what people bought. And wouldn't you like to know that people who bought these things and stayed in your hotel? Oh, there are other people that bought the same thing mm. that are probably would buy your hotel as well. Mm. I think there's a, there's a lot of crossover and a lot of great marketing potential. I think it's going to be a very, very strong mm. distribution channel. And just before we get to the last one, do you think, uh, where, how do you think Google's going to fit into that scene? Because I think between Amazon and Google, if Amazon does become yeah. more prevalent in that space, there's going to be a real battle there, don't you think? So if you're not a Prime member, you will just go on your web browser, on your phone, whatever, and type in whatever, and obviously Google will serve that up. But if you are in this walled garden of the app, you know, there is no Google mm -hmm. in the Amazon app, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's the power right. of, of the Amazon app. Okay, great. Finally, you mentioned the recession. We could potentially have a recession this decade. Give us a feeling why you feel that way. What, what, what is it that makes you think that? Historically, economic cycles last seven to eight years. We're now 10 years in. Yeah. So I think we're closer to one than not. Right. And I'm saying it's going to happen in the next 10 years. That means yeah. that somewhere in the next, you know, that we would have been 20 years of some of, of, of time frame mm. where a recession could happen. Mm. So, yeah, but is it going to be like this, this, this deep scenario like we saw in 2009 or, or post 9-11? I don't think so. Right. I think it's going to be mild and then we're going to re-accelerate. Okay, great. Yeah, Frito. Cool. Thank you so much. Great My to pleasure. see you again. Thank you. Cheers.